In our world of ever increasing demand for power, oil is continuously feeding the powerhouse growth. Tankers are the most economical and convenient mode of transport of oil and ferry more than 75% of the world's oil requirements. Most tankers are efficiently run with the ship's staff well aware of their duties and responsibilities, not only during normal operations, but also during emergencies. However, it is only when disaster strikes that the emergency preparedness of a tanker is tested to its limits. Is this your ship? Or would you rather, this is your ship? In order to provide guidance to the master and officers on board the ship with respect to the steps to be taken when an oil pollution incident occurs or is likely to occur, the Shipboard Pollution Emergency Plan or SOPEP was developed. SOPEP is compiled in accordance with Regulation 26 of Annex 1 of the International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships, generally referred to as the MARPOL 7378 Convention, and is made in the working language of the master and the vessel's crew. The primary the plan is to set in motion the necessary actions to stop or minimize the discharge of the pollutant and to mitigate its effects. It also provides the procedures to be followed by the master or persons in charge of the ship to report an oil pollution incident and lists the authorities or persons to be contacted in such an event. As per the guidelines provided by the IMO, all oil tankers of 150 tons gross tonnage and above and every ship other than an oil tanker of 400 gross tonnage and above shall carry on board the SOPEP approved by the administration. In the case of ships like chemical tankers, to which Regulation 16 of Annex 2 of Convention also applies, the SOPEP is combined with a plan dealing with pollution due to noxious liquids and is called the Shipboard Marine Pollution Emergency Plan, or SMPEP. Barely a year after the 1989 Exxon Valdez oil spill, the U.S. government passed the Oil Pollution Control Act of 1990, requiring, among other things, that the oil industry take greater precautions against spills and prepare detailed emergency response plans for cleaning up spills that may occur. For all ships trading in the USA, the ship owner needs to prepare a Vessel Response Plan or a VRP as per the guidelines provided under the Oil Pollution Control Act of 1990. The owner is also required to have a contract with an approved qualified individual, QI, to assist in the coordination of shore response at the time of an oil spill. Before we see the ship staff fighting the oil spill, let us turn the clock back to see that a tanker goes through cargo operation. Emergency stop for cargo pumps and cargo tank high-level alarm board are secured. 
all pollution prevention equipment is arranged in the manifold area. Air driven pumps are earth and kept ready for immediate use. Contingency plan is discussed in the pre-arrival safety meeting. The oil pollution prevention equipment, which is normally stored in the SOPEP locker, consists of disposable boiler suits, safety sea boots, absorbent pads, portable booms, buckets, shovels, brooms, sawdust and chemical dispersants. Oil booms are usually rigged around the vessel in port by port authorities to restrict the area affected in case of pollution. In the event of an oil spill, a general alarm is raised. All cargo pumps are stopped and manifold and tank valves closed. Under the guidance of the master, the oil spill is contained and cleanup operations put into action. Fire equipment is put into readiness. Portable pneumatic pumps may be put into use to divert the oil on deck to slop tanks. The coastal state authorities are immediately notified and the designated person ashore is contacted and briefed for shore coordination. In the United States of America, the qualified individual is contacted. In an emergency situation, it is imperative that all damage control operations are coordinated smoothly for maximum efficiency. SOPEP drills and desktop emergency response exercises should be regularly performed on ships. Regular exercises ensure that plans are still valid and that staff are familiar with both the plan and their own roles. Here is a preview of the salient features of a desktop exercise where the ship's personnel take up the role of all the important players in an emergency situation. Post 9 and 12. QI, this is the ER, the emergency response team of Z Shipping Company. One of our tankers, the MT Nonsuch, has done. Emergency response team 1, this is the qualified individual. Your message well understood. Emergency response team in charge, this is the master of MT Nonsuch. We have completed an initial assessment of the situation. Emergency response team assistant, please send an investigation team to Houston. And also release a Accidents, oil spills and hazardous substances spills involving substantial damage to personnel or natural resources are matters of broad multitude significant news. Oil spills in particular provide dramatic and upsetting pictures and the news media will look for scapegoats to further their own interest. It is therefore of great importance that the ship's staff does not get intimidated or overreact to the barrage of questions put up to them. The way of handling a press inquiry in an emergency can have a great impact on how well the public reacts to the situation and it can substantially affect how they view the company. The first contact with the media after any incident is therefore crucial and must be carefully prepared. The owners will appoint a spokesperson to handle the news media. All ship staff should stay away from shore personnel and media and no statements or speculations should be issued. The master shall handle the situation with great caution and redirect all queries to the office. As professional seafarers, we must remain aware of the fact that a ship constitutes a potential threat to the marine environment. It is only through regular drills and proper training that we can reduce accidents and minimize their harmful consequences and give our future generation a clean earth.